Viewers, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Utec eCar just outside Gothenburg. My name is Mikael Glanz, I'm the CEO of MyFC, and we're here today to present and demonstrate our proof of concept installation of our fuel cell system into a Fiat 500 EV. Before I hand over to Sebastian, who will uh, do a technology presentation and showcase the installation in the car, I will just run quickly through the series of events. Sebastian will start with uh, the installation showcase, then we will have a quick drive with the car, car. Uh, and then we will move into a panel discussion between uh, Roger Johansson at eCar, Utec, and uh, Björn Aronsson from Vatka Sverige and myself. The panel discussion will be led by uh, Elin Aldén from Lennox PR. And with that, I want to hand over to Sebastian. Please go ahead. Thank you, Michael, for that introduction. It is with great honor that I'm able to give you a first glance of our modular fuel cell system installed in the trunk of a Fiat 500 that has been converted to electrical propulsion by Yotec eCar. I will shortly give you an overview of our system, but before that, I'd like to show you a short video of the different parts of our system as well as different EV applications like two, three and four wheel vehicles as well as boats. For the past few years, MyFC has been hard at work marrying fuel cells and batteries. Today, we're at a pivotal point in time and are proud to present the next leap in fuel cell technology for electric vehicles. Our engineers have created a modular system that enables true freedom in design, no matter the platform. Merging fuel cells and batteries together, adding the high energy density and short charge time of fuel cells to existing systems, offsetting the major weaknesses of batteries. It's a slimmed down system consisting of H2 tanks, fuel cells, and an active power balancing technology that works in symbiosis with existing batteries. It allows the vehicle to reach further, refuel faster, and greatly prolong the lifespan of the batteries. The fuel cells achieve this by converting hydrogen via an electrochemical process to electricity, the only emissions being water. The electricity generated is then managed through the clever active power balancing technology and administered as needed to the drivetrain or the batteries, optimizing charging and endurance. MyFC's revolutionary technology disrupts the market by breaking the conventions of hydrogen and batteries. MyFC allows them both to come alive and truly sing as one, enabling an entirely new way of powering and fueling electric vehicles. MyFC is proud to announce that we are one step closer to an emission-free future. Welcome back. I hope that that gave you some idea of what the system is capable of. But now, what we've all been waiting for, Let's have a closer look into the trunk of this little Fiat. As visualized in the video, the hydrogen stored uh, behind the, seat, the seats are supplied at the appropriate pressure, flow and humidity to the anode side of the fuel cell. The uh, air, surrounding air is supplied to the cathode side of the fuel cell and uh, the electronics are making sure that the appropriate uh, uh, active power balancing is done to feed the charger of the battery as well as the powertrain of the car. We will now take the car for a test drive and the car will be driven by our CEO, Michael Glantz. Michael, please turn on the power. As you can hear, the uh, cooling has started and the surrounding air is supplied to the fuel cells. 
and their batteries being charged. So Michael, take her for a spin. Okay, we are in the concept car and I will take you for a quick spin. I will just back it out here. This is a uh, Fiat 500, which is a standard combustion engine normally, but it has been uh, converted into a EV. So it's now a Fiat 500 EV. And it's been converted uh, by UTEC and it's a bit special here because it has a, still has the stick shift. So it's a bit special to drive, uh, but nevertheless, it's electrified. It has a electric motor, a lithium ion battery and a BMS developed by UTEC. To this, we have, uh, of course, installed our fuel cell system. The system consists of uh, compressed hydrogen. This specific installation, we have uh, two smaller tanks um, installed. Uh, the hydrogen is fed to the fuel cell and it converts the hydrogen into electricity and runs the electricity through our active power balancing system. And then we charge the uh, lithium battery that's on board. Uh, the reason why we do that is that then we can either power the drivetrain from the battery or we can power different auxiliaries like heaters, coolers, uh, fans, or uh, whatever that's electrified in the car. Uh, so this was a very quick spin. Uh, I will try to find the parking lot here and uh, join you guys in the panel. Thank you. From under the hood and zooming out to have a look at the big picture, welcome into the garage and a discussion on electrification hydrogen and the automotive industry. And I'd like to welcome our guests here today. We have uh, Roger Johansson, you are our host today, and you are also the CEO and founder of Utec and eCar. So you are the, the hands and brains behind the concept we've seen today. Also welcome Björn Aronsson, you are the CEO of Vätgas Sverige, or Hydrogen Sweden, which is a private public NGO um, promoting hydrogen. And uh, shortly, we'll also have um, the, the man of the day, Mikael Glanz, the CEO of MyFC, who will join us shortly. But let's, let's start at the big picture. Um, Björn, you speak to politicians and regulators across the world uh, regularly. Uh, what is the current view on hydrogen and how would you say it's changed maybe over the past year? Well, hydrogen is nothing new. It, we have it since Big Bang here on Earth but it has been a very different focus and we haven't heard so much about it. But it's the, the most used uh, industrial gas. So we have it actually everywhere in our modern society. What is happening now lately is that we, we will see that it takes place in so many different sectors in our society. So, so how would you say the Swedish perspective on, on hydrogen uh, as, as fuel, where is that? happening now in, in the automotive sector? We, we have had cars since 2013 here. <clears throat> so we have roughly 50 cars running on the Swedish streets. Uh, but we, we see now that there is a, a growing interest uh, within buses and trucks and so on. And also in the industry, the steel industry, uh, in the buildings where we will store energy. The sum, uh, summer sun hours will be stored to the winter. So we see uh, in many different sectors and the interest will also then increase in the transport sector where we will build more refueling stations. Um, but hydrogen gas, and, and forgive me for asking, but it's, it still invokes fear in people, does it not? It, it, there's sort of this mystery. You say it's, it's everywhere, but, mm. but I don't think of myself as a hydrogen gas user. So what do you say to people who are fearful of hydrogen? <coughs> We have to take care of the fear and, and give good answers because hydrogen is not more dangerous than gasoline or diesel or batteries. Uh, they all have different risks, but we can handle them. So it's, it's a matter of education. And, and Sweden is not really a gas country. If you go into the center of Europe, they are more used to have gas for heating in the houses and so on, which we don't do <clears throat> to that extent. So we, we need to educate each other and see the benefit with this energy carrier. 
Uh, Mikael, MyFC used to develop its own fuel uh, to create its own hydrogen, but you've decided not to do that anymore. Why is that? Well, what we can see is, first of all, what we've been struggling with throughout the years is the availability of hydrogen uh, when we need it and, and in the form that we needed it. Uh, so we've been generating our own hydrogen when we needed it. Now, when we see that the infrastructure is being built out, uh, the initiatives both in the industry and, and uh, along the uh, society where the hydrogen society is growing, we actually going to use that gas instead. It's, it's more efficient, it's cost efficient, it's available, uh, the availability is growing. Uh, so we're moving over to a compressed gas solution. Yeah. Um. Roger, you are the host. We're actually in your premises today, and uh, you have been focusing on green technology solutions since you founded Yotec 27 years ago, if I count correctly. And, and I know that Roger is humble, so he won't tell you uh, some of the great brands he works with, but there are some really amazing things happening in this garage. So I'd like to ask you, uh, this is not your first hydrogen uh, car or, or construct that you've done, what you've just done for my FC, is it? No, we, we have been doing a lot of engineering before with the hydrogen car and also we have uh, coming and looking for all these problems that it comes with and it's no, now it looks like we're coming to a very good end <laughs> with a good solution. <laughs> good. What, what would you say has, has changed over the years that you have been working with fuel cells and hydrogen? For, first from the beginning, everything, everybody thought, thought it was very, very dangerous. They always uh, almost run away, but then, then they have been more and more educated and have a better understanding what what's happening. And I also see the problem with with, with uh, big batteries and this uh, earth metal and all these type of problem. And everybody looking to other solutions, possible solutions. So do you do you think that the combination of fuel cells and batteries is something we'll see more of? Is that a development that you foresee with your staff here? Yeah, for sure. That, that, that's uh, my personal see it as the right way to do it. Then you can combine two good things. That, that is encouraging. Um, Mikael, you, um, I mean, when I read about my FC, you talk a lot about your fuel cells because there are other companies on the market doing fuel cells, that, but yours are small and modular. Um, what you've showed today is a car that, that it has uh, um, a propulsion, but what other applications are, are possible for your technology, would you say? <clears throat> I mean, what, what we do, we generate electricity, and with that electricity we could power any auxiliaries in any vehicle, basically, if, if that's what we want to do. So the combination of supplying energy to the battery and store it in the battery, and then supply energy to uh, auxiliaries. And there are heaters, there are coolers, uh, fans and other accessories or auxiliaries in the cars and vehicles. So we could be a good match for uh, any automotive application or any mobile electrified vehicle, I would say. So, so, so it's not the fact that your cells were small does not mean they couldn't work for a very big vehicle, hypothetically? That's correct. Well, we are small when it comes to, to cell structure. Uh, then we can scale that up uh, in, to different sizes. And we can actually scale it up to the uh, what we call a perfect match with the battery size on board on the vehicle and the vehicle size and the range and the actual how the car is going to or how the vehicle is going to be used. So it's scalable, yes. Um, Björn, I mean we've, now we've sort of focused on all the possibilities of hydrogen and fuel cells and all the positive things that are happening. But there's also been a bit of a, of a uh, when I read about your organization, you are very clear that you are are um, promoting a, a, a sort of sane and, and uh, balanced view of hydrogen. Um, is there a debate in, in society that is, that is not so balanced at the time? I mean, or, or what is happening? Is there a tug of war with the different sort of schools or what's happening? Yeah, it's a time of polarization in, in the debate today. So everyone is, is really pushing their technology or their solution. But we see more and more that, uh, that there is not a silver bullet. We need to cooperate between the different energy solutions. And as Roger said before here, that the combination between the battery and the fuel cell can be the perfect match. 
So I, I see that is coming now also on the European arena that we, we talk about sectorial integration. Mm. The business sectors need to work to cooperate around uh, producing hydrogen to the right cost. And also on the technology side that you can find very interesting matches between different te technologies. And, and I believe that that is the winning concept of, of seeing these uh, wider view system uh, solutions. That, that's where we have the key for, for the sustainable society sooner or later. And you mentioned sustainable society and we've mentioned green technology and we've mentioned this as an aspect of, of electrification of, of smaller vehicles and larger. Um, but when I spoke to you before this panel, Björn, you also mentioned that hydrogen ambitions in Sweden would actually reduce vulnerability and maybe uh, create a, a heightened sense of security. Why, why is that? Well, what we, hydrogen is not only for immediate use. Uh, that's a way to store energy. So as I said earlier, you, you can take the sun from today and store it until to, to the winter and use it then. And that gives a possibility where you can store big amount of energy. Earlier we, we said we, we can't store energy, but we actually can. We can store it in water magazines. We can store it in, in hydrogen for a long, long time and a big amount of energy. And that gives you the freedom to, to use it when you need it. So actually we, we see the, the problem with the electricity grid systems today. We have enough of, of energy in our country, but we can't send the energy to, to the user. There are some cities who are actually lacking of energy when they need it. So they can't expand the industry and they can't build new buildings for people. They can't electrify the transport. <clears throat> so so it's, a, it's a, a bottleneck, so to say. Yeah. But by creating local and regional energy storage magazines, we could actually electrify a lot more of the transport sector and offer society more energy when they need it. And then we are not so vulnerable. We, are, we, we don't need to import the oil. We can produce the hydrogen locally. That's, well, that sounds like a dream. So what, <laughs> why isn't it happening? What's, what's if you, just your final question, if you had one sort of wish, who would you send it to and what would you ask them to do? No, I, I, I would wish to, to uh, of, of course, our national politicians. We, we, we need to educate them. We need to cooperate much more. And they need to see that it, it's not one simple solution that, they need to be educated. But there is a young generation of politicians coming now, and I, I see that they are more interested in these questions. So I am, I am hopeful. That's, that's good. And, and uh, Roy, to sum up, if I, if I ask you the same question, uh, out of all the companies you speak to, of all the, the, the minds that are thinking out the sort of transportation of the future that end up here with you, um, is there any sort of information you'd wish they would consider or something that you think would, 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 that they need to consider, especially maybe the big manufacturers when they venture into <coughs> something like this? What's a learning that you wish they had? I think uh, exactly as he's told uh, here is that we not uh, get rid of this not invented here and starting to working together and using different solutions and coming up to something that's really, really big. So is, is prestige coming down a bit? Are you seeing a change that there is, or is it still a lot of pride in your no, own? No, of course, it's a lot of <laughs> prestige and pride, <laughs> you know. You th th that's course. how the business is. That's how the business is. Well, thank you so much for coming to the panel today. It was enlightening for me. Um, if you are as fascinated as I am, and if you have any questions to our panelists, please uh, send them in uh, via email. There'll be uh, an email rolling at the bottom of the screen, and uh, we will make sure you get answers from any of these experts. And I hand it over to you, Mikael, to sum up the day. Thank you, Elin, for uh, leading the panel. Thank you, Bjorn and Roger, for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the day and the information that we have shared with you. Uh, it's been a very important day and uh, important milestone for the company uh, for us to showcase the proof of concept uh, and what we can do with the technology. So uh, please follow us. Uh, if you want more information, sign up on the homepage. We'll keep that posted and updated. Thank you for today. <laughs>